Hi, dear colleagues. Welcome back to Dental Arena. It's an honor and pleasure to have uh, here with us uh, Robert Norquist, mm -hmm. uh, which was a leading figure in the last 35 years in a dental business. Uh, he was a director of marketing at Dental Ease, also at uh, Cold Teen, and he was uh, responsible for merging the Cold Teen uh, and uh, Weldent, and then uh, was vice president at Ultradent, mm -hmm. and uh, currently uh, he is uh, vice president sales and marketing at uh, Centrix Dental. Mm -hmm. Welcome, Bob. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, I want to um, tell us some words about uh, who is Centrix, uh, and some words about the company, the, uh, the concept, how we started all. So Centrix is a 50-year-old company started by a dentist, a Dr. William Dragon, uh, who actually uh, comes from, from uh, Eastern Europe and in this area. Uh, he began, uh, he was a practicing dentist, who found ways to improve the flow of dental materials to the tooth. His very first products were, were the com uh, composite guns that we all see and are used every day now, and the tubes that go with it that hold the composite material or many other restorative materials. And this allowed the dentist for the first time to inject directly into the preparation, to the bottom of the preparation, to avoid um, entrapment of air and bubbles and enable a, a higher quality restoration and make the process go faster and easier for, for the dentist and their assistants. That was our beginning products. And since that time, we've introduced several other revolutionary products that changed the application of dental materials. The most recent of one is an impression material called no cord VPS, an asilicone material. And this is a material that is unlike any other mater uh, impression material. And we'll talk about that more Yeah, we'll talk later. about uh, that soon. A uh, question uh, that is quite often from a uh, dentist from Romania, um, and maybe a lot of uh, misconception will be how different it's the US market from uh, the one in Europe, and especially from the one in, in uh, Romania. Are the dentists in US using different kind of materials? Uh, are the dentists in the uh, US more advanced or mm, totally different than uh, the one in Europe? Mm -hmm. And because you were in this business for uh, quite a uh, long time yeah. and you travel a lot, um, what can you tell us? Uh, where is Romania? Where is the Europe? Where is US? Yeah. What are the needs? So one of the pleasures of my job is I do get to travel quite a bit. Um, but so far in the last three months, I've been in Australia and in Thailand, Korea and Japan, as well as Germany for, for a conference, and, and here today in, in Romania. And what I find is the quality of dentistry everywhere you go is at high standards. Romania makes, is no different to me than Germany or to the US. The biggest difference, though, is how the dentist is paid. The reimbursement system uh, uh, approaches from the national health systems or from the private systems drives the, uh, the treatments that are done and to a lesser extent the materials that are done. Across the, the world we see the same kinds of materials, the same quality of materials and the same quality of dentistry. It is really just how the dentist gets paid. A very important part because we need to earn uh, what our time is worth. And so we take care of our families properly, and that makes us take care of our patients properly. I'm 100% uh, agree with you on, uh, on that. Uh, regarding um, composite, for example, uh, the Romanian market, the dentists in uh, Romania will use in the same percentage mm -hmm. uh, high quality composites, mm -hmm. um, just like any other dentist in, uh, in Germany. Of mm -hmm. course, we will have uh, some dentists that will use a cheaper composite, but mm -hmm. it's the same, the percentage all over the world mm -hmm. as much uh, as uh, I can tell. Um, where I see a, a difference will be, uh, for example, in uh, prosthodontics, the, the crown and bridges. Uh, in US, I saw that PFM are um, almost the next in the dinosaur. Yes. Um, I think only a few percent of the dentists uh, in US will place uh, right now uh, metalloceramic. Mm. In Romania, uh, right now is the norm. It's mm. really expensive for a regular and average um, person to, to afford the uh, zirconia mm. or even uh, Emax uh, mm. crown. So the norm will be uh, PFM right now in Romania. It's, it's true worldwide. And it really comes back to how does the patient have to pay for yeah. the treatment and, and what is their ability to pay? And if there is reimbursement from any kind of a national health program, these drive uh, the materials that the dentist is using and the treatments that are offered. For example, one really important uh, area of treatment is, is the whole area of prevention. And yet it's 
uh, less often applied in Romania and, and other countries where the reimbursement is not available to, yeah. to Even in the United States where there is a lot of prevention done for children, on adults it's not uh, provided anywhere as often. And because there's not reimbursement for that, that procedure. So the, basically, dentists around the world deliver the kind of treatment for which the patient is able and can afford to pay. So the, the money, it's uh, the key factor, again, here mm -hmm. in, uh, in dentistry. Okay. The, the saying that follow the money, yeah. it's true in everything, including dentistry. Yeah, and uh, because we uh, always spoke uh, about money, uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, digital impressioning. Mm -hmm. Because uh, a few years ago, that was uh, like the future, like mm -hmm. near future. Like in five years from now, everyone, every dentist will use exclusively uh, digital uh, imaging. No one will use um, regular impression uh, material. Uh, there is also the, the misconception that in US, most of the dentists right now are using uh, intraoral scanner. Mm -hmm. No one is doing uh, regular uh, mm -hmm. uh, impression technique. Uh, what, what is the truth? Well, the truth is that uh, going digital is a great thing for the dentist and the patient for many good reasons. But whether you're going uh, digital through intraoral scanning or extraoral scanning, both get you to the same place as easily. The belief was intraoral scanning would be replacing analog materials very rapidly. And so they grew initially well. Then we have seen now in the last uh, couple of years that the, the adoption rate has leveled off to only about 18% of dental offices have adopted uh, intraoral scanning. Interestingly, and led by Europe, uh, we now see a, an increase in extraoral scanning or impression scanning, where you take an impression in the normal manner using analog materials and then either scan the impression or perhaps better yet, scan the model itself yeah. after you've created that, that stone model. Uh, this allows um, the, the dentist to be able, and, and the laboratory to be able to correct uh, um, problems in, in, in the anatomy or even in the impression more easily than the limitations of an intraoral scan. Still, for any dentist and for any patient, the ability to scan and digitize is a, is a great tool or I understand my patient's records today, and I can save that record and compare their oral health changes over the life of that patient. So I can easily track their oral health status and what has changed. That is, is a fantastic opportunity. But that could occur through intraoral scanning or extraoral scanning. So we are still using a lot of uh, regular impression material today? It, the, actually, the total consumption of regular impression material, it, it continues to grow. There was concern that it would go away, and it's not going away because of the rise now of extra oral scanning. So again, the dentist uses their preferred impression material and takes the impression in a normal manner, and then scans either the impression or after they've poured, poured the model, they'll scan that, or the laboratory will scan that. Uh, talking a, lo a little bit about the uh, regular impression material, mm -hmm. um, are dentists in U.S. Uh, using more polyether compared with the VPS than the uh, than Europe? For example, in Romania, um, most majority of the dentists will use uh, C silicon. Mm -hmm. C silicon. I knew. I spoke in the uh, U.S. with uh, some mm -hmm. dentists. They said it's something old. They uh, didn't use that for uh, for a while. Mm -hmm. Still, he. Uh, it's almost the, the norm. Mm -hmm. um, of course, uh, don't have the, the same definition as mm -hmm. uh, VPS or polyether. How, how is the uh, US market? So when I began in dentistry about 35 years ago, uh, C-silicone at that time was already fading in use in, in the United States. Today, it, it, it would be rarely used clinically, if, if ever, I would say. Um, A-silicone is the primary material used. Polyether is less than 20%, about 20% of the consumption of materials. Uh, there are great advantages to a polyether, but the biggest disadvantage, frankly, is the patient reaction to it. The, yeah, the taste true. is so strong yeah. uh, and the patient reaction is so bad uh, that dentists have realized they get the same results with an A-silicone material and without having a, a problem from the patient's point of view. Yeah. So in the, in the U.S., uh, it's A-silicone materials. Um, in the U.S., we call those uh, VPS or vinyl polysiloxane, same material. Yeah. Um, and that is what's growing today. 
I want to talk uh, a little bit about uh, tissue management right mm -hmm. now and also um, uh, VPS material from uh, from Centrix uh, about no court, which is a totally different uh, mm -hmm. approach to the uh, regular impression and technique and basically replacing or uh, be a, a complementary uh, technique to, uh, to retraction cord. Mm -hmm. Tell us uh, a few words about uh, Centrix. Any, any impression is only as good as how well you manage the tissue. If, there, if there's uh, tissue that overlaps and does not expose the, the, the margin well enough, if there are fluids remaining in the sulcus or blood that continues to come out uh, uh, from the sulcus, uh, you can uh, trap air and bubbles and you, you get an incomplete capture of the margin. So the first and most important step uh, in managing uh, the, the, t the, the tissue is, is good tissue management and to result in a good impression. Still, there's about 20% of the dentists who never use any retraction uh, material at all, whether it's paste or retraction cord. Uh, recognizing this, um, Centrix has, has pioneered a brand new kind of material to make it easier for the dentist to both manage the tissue, manage the fluids that are in the sulcus, and, and result in a quality impression. We call this no cord VPS, again, VPS asilicone material. The wash material, the, the light body material, has a, an astringent built into the, that wash so that when it's against the tissue, the, the astringent is against all the cap, cut capillaries and causes the capillaries to constrict and bleeding to, to stop. The very interesting part is how the tray material sets and, and it's the rate at which it sets because it firms a little faster than, than the light body wash material and allows it to create more dynamic drive, more mo mechanical movement of the tissue away from the tooth. As you expand the sulcus, the wash is able to penetrate and uh, you're able to, to capture a, a high quality impression. What we find is, is that it's an ideal material for almost any kind of impression, but like every material, the dentist has to understand how it's used in their hands yeah. and uh, what their technique allows them to do. So while we call it no cord, for many cases, I would still recommend that cord be used. If I have a, a multiple units, uh, more, than, more than two units, for example, uh, a, a large roundhouse case, uh, there's, it, it is better to apply at least one cord. Uh, if you apply two cords and pull that top cord, you'll always have a few bleeders. But then place your wash because it's like it, it, it has the restringent in it and then seat your tray. So now you'll have mechanical compression as well as uh, chemical um, uh, cessation of the bleeding and you'll uh, obtain a high quality impression as a result. So as with every material a dentist use, it's how they manage their technique. I would recommend that no cord is outstanding without any retraction uh, paste or cord when you're super gingival or when your margins are even equal gingival. No cord is also an outstanding material when you are concerned about the, the, the health of the tissue. If you have a patient who had periodontal surgery uh, within the last year or so, and you're concerned about the attachment, no cord is, uh, provides more protection for the, the, the gingiva. You no longer need to uh, go into the sulcus with a packer and risk damaging the epithelial attachment. So no cord offers many advantages, but the dentist still has to to take the responsibility of learning the right use of that material and for each, each patient, each case. So basically you adapt uh, the material to your actual situation. Mm -hmm. It will not be a, a recipe for every case. Yeah. Every dentist knows every patient, even on the same patient, every tooth is it's, uh, it's mm -hmm. different. You need different approaches. Uh, it will not replace in every case the, the retraction cord because sometimes when you have a subgingival margin, you have to place the first cord just to push the gingiva away, not to cut it with the burr when you are, uh, when you are preparing uh, the tooth. That uh, placement of the retraction cord is not necessary for the uh, for the impression itself, no. but mostly for the for the preparation. Mm -hmm. After that, if your margin is way uh, 
too much above the uh, below the the gingiva you can use the second quart or you can use an astringent paste if you have a, a mm. really high bleeding uh, yeah. or inflammatory tissue so basically it's a vps it's a regular impression material a silicone with the added benefit of uh, astringent uh, inside yeah that's correct and, and we do recommend the use of of the wash and the tray material together solely because of the setting profile of the tray material there is there's a, a at least one other um, impression material in the market uh, where their tray material has a similar profile, then they can be combined, yes. But if you use a, a traditional material with a, a smoother curve of, of uh, setting profile, you won't get that push of, of the soft tissue moving away from the hard tissue. Dentists will, will not be surprised to know that sometimes manufacturers want to say that their product solves all potential problems. No. And that's just not reality. Uh, we, every case is, is unique and different. Uh, the use of any material in any situation is always dependent on that specific case. It's the same with NoCord. But what NoCord does is provide the dentist more options. And especially as they learn the strengths of the material, they realize that there are more and more situations where they can eliminate the time it takes to place retraction cord the discomfort it takes for the patient to have cord placed on them uh, and, and get the same high quality result. So no cord is, is a tool that allows a dentist to be able to be more flexible in their treatment of the patient and, and uh, be able to save time and, and money in, in, their, in their procedures. Most of the dentists that I know, uh, they are hating packing uh, cord. Sometimes most of the patients I know yeah. <laughs> are hating having cord packed. Uh, most of the uh, sometimes you'll not be able to place a, a cord. Mm -hmm. You'll have uh, such um, uh, small uh, tissue. So mm -hmm. basically, placing a cord will mean uh, destroying the dental ligament. And I know Centrix uh, is a pioneer in gingival retraction. Mm -hmm. uh, before no cord, it was Gingitrack. Before Gingitrack, it was another product. Correct. Um, they uh, also have uh, access edge and access flow, which are a clay-based mm -hmm. uh, retraction mm -hmm. material. So basically, uh, Centrix has uh, a portfolio for um, uh, gingiv uh, gingival management and, mm -hmm. uh, and bleeding. Uh, how? No cord because it's a VPS with astringent competes or integrate with the access edge access flow and ginger track. Well, so for manufacturers, uh, it, it's often believed that all we want to do is sell product without regard to how the dentist practices dentistry. If that was the case, I, I may not offer three different retraction paste as well as a, an impression material that can build in the retraction uh, into the material. Uh, I would cannibalize sales from one versus the other. But in fact, the dentist needs to have many tools based on the case in front of them. No cord is, is somewhat case specific. It's a great impression material in every case, as long as you manage the tissue properly in every case. Uh, we use, uh, we have a vinyl polysiloxane or silicone retraction paste, ginger track. Today, I think that is an outstanding material, particularly when you're doing digital impression yeah. because it, it pulls away from the, 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 the arch cleanly without leaving debris in the sulcus. And so it's an easier for the dentist to remove that, have the tissue stay away from the tooth and be able to uh, capture that digital impression. We offer two different types of clay retraction paste. One is much more viscous, that's our access edge. One is much more flowable, that's our access flow. And again, that is based on what the dentist needs. I know many dentists who use both access edge and access flow, and it depends, do I need to penetrate more into the sulcus in, in this case, or do I need more um, mechanical uh, pressure uh, with a more viscous material to, that helps to push tissue away? That is something we can't decide for the dentist. That's it true. is a case by case. Uh, you know this, you do this every day with, with your patients. But having the different tools you now have a hammer when you have a nail. You have a screw, screwdriver when you have a screw to place. So for each case, we have the right materials, or try to have the right materials for that, that patient, that case, that day.
And it's uh, a lot about the dentist preferences. Uh, myself, I will use a lot of Access Edge. My colleague will use uh, Access Flow mm -hmm. uh, because he will like more the consistency. Mm -hmm. So it's same. It's clay-based material, also astringent uh, inside. Um, but also there are great help when you need to dry the sulcus, mm -hmm. not only for uh, gingival retraction to take an impression, but for example, when you are cementing a veneer, because you want to dry sulcus, sometimes you are not able to place a rubber mm -hmm. them because mm -hmm. the, the margin will be way too deep. So uh, by placing a clamp over the tooth, you'll cause only more, uh, more bleeding. So even if you are causing some bleeding, you mm -hmm. can use uh, uh, this paste to stop the bleeding and also dry the sulcus and you'll have no interference with the uh, uh, adhesive procedure and uh, cementation of, uh, of veneer. Well, well, and further, just on the preparation itself, depending on the case, you may want to place a retraction paste or even a retraction cord to just move the tissue away so that if you have to go subgingivally, the tissue's not in the way. Uh, um, uh, rotary curettage is not a good solution. Uh, so we want to move the tissue away. An easy way to do that is place the right paste Use a compression cap to give you uh, me uh, mechanical, mechanical pressure as well, and that will help to move the tissue away. Now you have an open, dry uh, uh, sulcus, and you have easy access to prepare th that tooth to the margin that you, you feel is necessary for that case. So now I would like to talk a little bit about the post-endodontic treatment. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a big topic in, uh, in dentistry. Mm -hmm. um, maybe we'll talk a little bit about uh, who is in charge to place a glass fiber post, a post inside mm -hmm. the, the root canal. Um, a lot of time you will have referring dentist send the patient uh, to an um, endodontist. The endodontist, of course, will perform the endodontic uh, treatment. And a lot of the referring dentists will uh, say, okay, you just make the root canal treatment, just fill the root canal, mm -hmm. and myself, I will place the, the post and I will make the core buildup. In my opinion, uh, it's really important, and uh, uh, all the time, the post inside the root canal should be placed by endodontist mm -hmm. once they uh, made the root canal treatment. Because I assume an endodontist will have uh, mag uh, magnification, at least some loop, if not even a dental microscope. Mm -hmm. the, de uh, the endodontist will know in depth every part of the root canal. Mm -hmm. They will know how long it is the root, how large is the, the root. So for me, there is no discussion here the endodontist should place um, the post inside the root canal as part of the endodontic treatment. Mm -hmm. We know that is not uh, the norm all over the, the world. Um, Centrix has anchor DC minimix. Mm -hmm. Centrix has also connexion. Mm -hmm. Centrix has exposure. So basically, it's a line of products designed for post endodontic mm -hmm. treatment. Mm -hmm. um, I know soon you will have an uh, expansion of, uh, of line, mm -hmm. also designed for post endodontic mm -hmm. treatment to complete. Um, Tell us some words about uh, how Centrix is seeing uh, this, uh, this area post-endodontic treatment. Um, what product do you recommend to the dentist, maybe technique? Please tell us some. Uh, so I largely agree with your idea uh, that the endodontist, but really it's the dentist who does the endodontics ought to place the, the post and, and build the core. And the reason for that is they are most intimately familiar with the shape of, of that canal. And, and how large they've, they've built that, uh, that canal. If, if you then take that patient and don't do the, the post core and you refer that to the, a general practitioner, refer back yeah. to the general practitioner, they will not be so knowledgeable. And that's when we see uh, errors that happen and, and perforations and the like that occur. So I completely agree it, 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 in the best case, it should be the, the dentist who does the preparation of, of the canal. Still, in, particularly in the United States, where we have a large population of endodontists, and we find that general practitioners refer to the endodontics to the endodontist, the endodontist almost always sends the core, post core back for the GP to do because they don't want to disrupt the, the referral relationship. Yeah. Uh, that's unfortunate because this is a case where, uh, or a, a procedure where intimate knowledge of the shape of the canal and, and uh, how the endodontist left it is, is critical to long-term success. 
My own background in, in post cores began with uh, with Whaledent, as we mentioned before. Whaledent was the inventor, uh, the uh, the founder of Whaledent was the inventor of the Parapost, and that line of posts today still remains the most widely used uh, post core system uh, in in the world. Um, so I, I think I have strong familiarity in this area. Uh, in my early days, there was discussion, did the, did the post strengthen the tooth? It does not. But what it does, though, is distribute the forces of the tooth. In today's world of uh, adhesive dentistry, now post-endodontic therapy takes, a, takes on a whole new meaning. We have the ability to, to um, bond together the tooth to the, the cement or the core material, to the post, to the final restoration. And now we have an, uh, a very intimately connected uh, uh, post-core tooth system. I, I call it a monoblock restoration. And this allows more perfect, uh, more ideal distribution of, of, of occlusal forces um, and, and we, the greatest opportunity for success. There's still some keys in, into doing great um, uh, uh, post-core restorations. And, and the, probably the most important element is the ferrule. Do you have enough of a ferrule? Do you have enough of, of material within the tooth? Essentially, I go back to structural integrity. And structural integrity means I, I, my goal is to leave as much dentin behind as possible, or said the other way, is to remove as little as possible. If I've done the endodontics uh, myself, then I, I realize how much um, material is, is left in the tooth. I will look at that tooth and, and understand, are there any caries remaining in that canal? Then I, I must remove only as much as I need to, to, to have minimal amount of caries, whether it's my belief is complete caries removal or selective caries removal. But how do you know? We can have clinical judgment, yes, it's fantastic. But if there's a tool that tells you that you have remaining caries, wouldn't you be better off to know that in fact, you've attained your goal, whether it's complete carriage removal or selective carriage removal. Because selective carriage removal is dependent upon a, a border of healthy dentin surrounding that carious lesion. Then when I cover it up and I put it into an anaerobic environment, the, the bacteria will, will die and, and the, um, the lesion will no longer be a threat to the tooth. How do you know? And you don't know if you rely only on clinical judgment. We've, we have developed a product that enables uh, the dentist to be able to identify if there's carious material remaining through a simple device. We call that expose for exposing uh, the remaining caries. And it's a simple uh, dye dried onto our Benda micro brush that is when touched to a wet lesion will stain that, the carious material. It won't stain the healthy material, yeah. just the carious material. When you rinse it away, you can see if that material is, is carious or not. There's a blue dye and there's a red dye because in different clinical situations, you, uh, red may not be the right color for you. you. You may need to have blue. If you're close to the, to the pulp chamber, it'll look more red. You wouldn't, wouldn't want to use a red in, in that case. But if you have an old amalgam restoration that you're, you've um, removed, you're going to have dark staining already. So blue may not show, be enough of a contrast. So we have different choices. The most important is that the dentist is sure that whatever their goal for caries removal has been achieved. Now, when we talk about post-endo treatment, uh, again, the, the dentist who did the endodontics is probably the correct person to do that uh, post-core therapy. Then, the, from all the research I've read, says that the, the post that ought to go into that tooth should be one that passively fits in that canal to whatever size the, the, the dentist, endodontist or general practitioner, whatever size they've increased that, that, that canal. It fits, uh, it fits uh, passively into the canal, and then you use your, your uh, cement. We would recommend a dual cure cement because you're gonna be deep into the canal where a light cannot reach. That's you, for sure. You want to ensure that all the material has been, has been fully cured. And if you're gonna use a dual cure material, then you really need to use a dual curing bonding agent to hold that all together. So again, deep into the canal, you're sure that everything is, is, is fully polymerized and that you have a, a solid monoblock restoration. 
So our dual cure uh, core buildup material and post cement material, we call Encore DC, DC for dual cure. Our dual cure uh, bonding agent is called Connexio. And again, with that product, you have uh, both the uh, uh, activator and, and, and the uh, uh, dual carrying activator as well, so that all the materials that you need to have to do a, a, an effective post-core are in the package. And again, we would, we would say you want to first make sure that your carries is managed the way you want it managed and that you know that you're sure, and then you can uh, easily place uh, your, your, your c cement you seat your post passively, um, and, and then when you cure it, both light cure it at the coronal end and, and it's self-curing at, at the apical end, you now have a fully cured, fully bonded monoblock restoration that will well distribute the forces, always ensuring that you have a good ferrule at, um, at the coronal end. But if you're not sure if you've had the right carriage removal, you'll remove more dentin than you would ideally like to have done. Now you've uh, compromise the structural integrity, integrity of the tooth. These tools allow a dentist to do exactly what they know they want to do, but because tools have not been there to uh, help them in this procedure, um, they relied solely on clinical judgment. Now there are tools available that are easy to use, low cost to use, and the dentist can be sure. Yeah, I'm a big fan of uh, exposing, and I can tell even by using a dental microscope. Mm -hmm. So you are working with something like a 20 times uh, magnification. Mm -hmm. It's so hard sometimes to tell which is pigmented, which is infected, which mm -hmm. is affected, which is sound denting. Mm -hmm. um, I uh, learned in dental school just to take and explore and touch the, mm -hmm. uh, the denting and you will feel uh, some soft denting. Mm -hmm. I can tell you cannot feel 20 microns of infected dentin. Mm -hmm. If that will stay there, that infected dentin can affect your, uh, your work later. Yes. Or if you see uh, too much uh, pigmented dentin and you uh, are too, too vigorous, you'll take a burr and start to remove all uh, that it's uh, pigmented. Sometimes you are removing sound dentin. Sound dentin that's stained, but not infected. Yeah. So it's uh, a paramount important, uh, importance to remove only that it's uh, mm -hmm. infected. Yeah. And that's why a uh, carry indicator, a uh, carry detector, it's so, so important, even when you are using a dental microscope. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, from a, your advice, it's on par with uh, some study that uh, I re uh, uh, read, and also uh, the indication will be always choose the glass fiber post or the post that you are using, even if it's a carbon mm -hmm. uh, titanium, based on the root canal. Mm -hmm. Never uh, make a root canal fit the glass fiber post that yes. you are having. Because sometimes, for example, you are already perform uh, the endodontic treatment, you already enlarge the, the root canal, mm -hmm. so leave that root canal enlarged, just clean the sealer from inside the root canal, mm -hmm. then take a glass fiber post that will mm -hmm. fit your root canal. Don't make your root canal fit the glass fiber post. That will be, uh, that will be really important. And uh, some studies that I read also, the main failure when you are performing a uh, adhesive core buildup, the number one, 98%, it's decimentation. Mm -hmm. And why? Because most uh, of dentists, maybe uh, they don't know, maybe um, because of the marketing from a dental uh, producer, they are using regular bonding inside mm. the root canal. There is no way light will reach inside mm. the root canal, and especially in the dentinal tubules and the micro retentivities, mm. that will uh, cure uh, regular, only a light cure bonding. Mm. So always inside the root canal, you need a dual cure bonding, and keep in mind that um, most of the bonding, what, uh, at least uh, a part of them are not chemically compatible with mm. a dual cure composite. Mm -hmm. Basically, they will um, n inhibit the setting reaction mm -hmm. of dual cure composite mm -hmm. because of the low pH will mm -hmm. destroy the, the catalyst. So the right way of doing the, the core buildup will be to use a complete uh, mm -hmm. family. Mm -hmm. So in this case, uh, if you are using Conexio with Anchor, you know for sure they are 100% compatible mm -hmm. and uh, you'll have a success. And in my experience in um, I don't know, in the last five years in the, I start to count, to uh, write every patient and every core build-up that I made, 
I've seen only three failures. Mm. Uh, two of them were on the lateral incisor with insufficient feral effect, mm. and one it was on a central incisor mm. well, with extension. So basically, I didn't have anti-rotational uh, uh, lock on that uh, on that dude. But I never seen a, a, a fracture, a catastrophic failure, mm. even on uh, those two uh, lateral incisor. I was able to uh, to save the mm -hmm. uh, the teeth. It's important when you are placing a post inside the root canal and you are performing a adhesive uh, core buildup, you all the time you will strengthen the tooth and you will decrease uh, significantly the risk of uh, catastrophic failure. Mm -hmm. When I mean in the catastrophic, I mean basically uh, uh, breaking the tooth um, under the, the gingival line. You, you will. You as much as two thirds of the way down the, the, the length of the uh, of the root itself. So this, this is an area of such great change over, over the, my years in, in dentistry. Um, when I began with, with Parapost, it was a stainless steel post um, uh, cemented in place with zinc phosphate. What a change. Uh, and it's all because of the new materials that allowed that change to, uh, to occur. Uh, as we moved into the world of uh, adhesive dentistry and bonding became uh, the standard way of, of caring for any restoration, uh, th then the, the opportunity for a glass fiber post that would allow the, it, it to bond chemically to the, with, with the bonding agent and, and then secure itself to, to the, the dentin in, in the root was a, a way of increasing the, the, the quality of that restoration, the longevity of that restoration, helping to guard against the, the root fracture that you, you just mentioned. Um, we went back from the earliest days of, of the research with, with uh, you know, Drs. Nathanson or, or, or um, uh, uh, Dr. Caputo on, on the stress research, research or, or um, any number of dentists in, in, the, in the old ways of doing things. And today, those same dentists will we'll show you that the data says a bonded uh, post-core is the most effective treatment. But then you, like every other technique, you need to use the right materials. Uh, too many dentists will say, I have a, a bonding agent in my office that I use for my, my direct composites. Fantastic, I'll use that deep into the canal as well. It's, it's a light cure material. It doesn't, it, the light does not reach deep into the can canal. Uh, we may have uh, chemistry um, incompatibility yeah. between the, the restorative material or the, uh, the, the, um, the kind of cement that's being used uh, and the bonding agent. Uh, so the dentist needs to look now at what's different in, in these materials. It's why we built our line so that these were compatible with each other, that if you selected Encore DC and, and Connexio, you knew that they were compatible, enabled a, a f uh, full polymerization of materials all the way deep into the canal, and that they would stay compatible. We find that with Encore DC, fantastic material, but if I use a traditional light cured only material meant for, for um, direct composite restorations, the results are not the same. Right. So it, it's important, as with every other procedure, as with every other set of materials, the dentist pays attention to this bonding material. And, and not all bonding materials are the same for the different kinds of situations. That's true. So that's, we tried to build a line that make, made it easy. Uh, Dr. Dragon, um, when he formed the company, and until today, he's still active in the company, his, his belief, his mission is making dentistry easier and we can make it certainly more complicated. But making it easier says we recommend a, the correct bonding, the type of bonding material with the correct um, uh, uh, post-core material and that we link these all, all together. So basically being a family, uh, you are guaranteed that we'll work together, they will work uh, every time. Um, because for a dentist, it will be quite hard to take a bonding from company mm -hmm. X uh, associated with the uh, core builder for uh, company uh, uh, Z and uh, then read all the instructions when they are compatible, where, uh, where they are not. So by using from the same family, uh, you are 100% that uh, this is the right way of uh, using well, the material. I love the term guaranteed. Uh, I, I cannot use the term guaranteed because there's always things that can go wrong, uh, both in, in the application of the materials. That's true. Uh, so, Isolation, so, I, I will not. So th there's, there's a lot of issues yeah. that, that yeah. get involved. But you're right that when the company has worked to um, uh, pair a one uh, material with, a, with its um, uh, counterpart and they work to, to test and ensure that these two materials work together, at least the dentist knows that in this case they will work together. Are there other things one could use? Most likely there are. 
But which ones? Then now the dentist has to go do the research behind yeah. that to say, if this is my preferred uh, core buildup material, then what's the compatible um, uh, bonding agent? And in our case, we tried to make it easier by, by ensuring that we had the right uh, bonding material with the right core buildup material. And, and that we know that it will work with glass fiber posts as well. So uh, right now I want to talk a little bit about prevention. Mm -hmm how it's in the uh, United States done, the prevention. Mm -hmm. I know you have a large program for children, but now also for, for adults. How is the prevention in, uh, in Europe? Because I have a colleague in Germany, in Poland. Mm -hmm. I know that, uh, for example, in Poland, there will be much more prevention done for children uh, compared with, uh, with Romania. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I will tell the, the truth. Um, in Romania, we are not. Uh, and so much prevention. Mm -hmm. uh, the fluoride varnish is not that is not that uh, used how it used mm -hmm. to be, uh, or as it should. How uh, how you are doing in the uh, U.S.? What Romania can improve in uh, in that uh, in this area to catch up with the rest of the world? This is perhaps the area of dentistry that I'm I'm most passionate about, and the 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 value of pre preventive services goes beyond just that individual tooth. We know today that oral health is directly related to systemic health, that we find oral bacteria, oral plaque, is part of the plaque buildup in, in the arteries leading to one's heart. We know that oral health um, and inflammation directly are, is directly related to um, pregnancy-related issues, preterm birth and low birth weight babies. We know that that oral health and oral conditions are related, directly related to um, some types of cancers. So the, 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 the oral health conditions affect systemic health, the whole health of, of the patient. And so in dentistry, we too have historically viewed the mouth as, as somewhat separate from the whole body. The medical profession has also tended to view the, the mouth and what dentists do as separate from the rest of the body and its health. Unfortunately, that has led to, to poor overall systemic outcomes than if we, if we include oral health as part of systemic health. So prevention to me is the key in doing that. Uh, in the United States, there's a lot more prevention performed than I believe everywhere, anywhere else in, in the world. And today we see that the rate of caries for children, for under 18s, has been declining. That's fantastic and it's directly related to the amount of preventive care that's done. But as we said at the beginning, this is still, a, a, every treatment area is driven by how the dentist is reimbursed. And I think in Romania there's, there's little or no reimbursement for that's preventive true. cares. Uh, in some other countries uh, there is reduced um, um, uh, reimbursement for preventive care. In the United States and, and many other countries with national health systems or other insurance systems, reimbursement stops at age 18. So now in the US we see an increasing rate of caries on, on those over 18. And that rate of increase increases as patients get older. When I go to countries like Japan, where now the, the uh, percentage of the population that's over 65 is dramatically higher than anywhere else in the world. They worry about the cost to the healthcare system, overall healthcare system, of the restorative care that's going to be required for those older adults because prevention was not done on them. So now the, the Japanese government and, and our partners in Japan are looking at how can we bring um, an adequate level of reimbursement, because frankly the, the, the level of reimbursement in Japan is, is, is so small that it's almost like buying a cup of coffee. It's, it's just inconsequential for the need of the patient. But these are areas that, that we're actively involved in and trying to gain change, because if we drive greater preventive care, we will see greater systemic health for the patients, the ultimate goal. So in the United States, uh, we, we have a, a range of preventive products, but the, the primary product is our Fluoridose fluoride varnish. Fluoride varnishes over the last uh, five, five to eight years have completely replaced the, the use of, of fluoride gels in trays. Um, according to the American Dental Association, only fluoride varnishes should be used on children under six years old. 
and that uh, fluoride gel in trays or fluoride varnish can be used on patients old, older than that. The problem with fluoride gel in trays is that it needs to be in the mouth for at least four minutes. And you must have continuous suction at the same time so that the patient doesn't swallow um, a harmful amount of that fluoride. With a fluoride varnish, you have the same uptake benefit that you might have with the gel, but without the, the, the fear of swallowing all that, that fluoride. Plus, instead of four minutes for the application, the typical application of a fluoride varnish should be done in under a minute, somewhere between 30 and 45 seconds. It does not require the dentist, assistant, or hygienist to uh, act like a, a Van Gogh and uh, meticulously paint on every tooth. It is actually four broad stripes on, on the buccal surfaces, four bo uh, broad stripes on the lingual surfaces of the teeth, and perhaps across the occlusal surfaces as well. And it's just that level of, of application uh, that is needed. The, the varnish then wicks between the teeth and, 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 and provides the, the recharging of saliva so that there's a, the a fluoride reservoir uh, built back in, in, into the mouth. So there's no reason why uh, a fluoride varnish treatment can't be done at the ev end of every dental appointment so that the, the patient is covered and, and, and the, uh, um, they receive that fluoride care that prevents the, the growth of caries. If you've had a carious lesion in your mouth in the last, ten, uh, last two years, you're considered high risk. And you need to go two more years after that uh, without uh, any caries to know that uh, you're, uh, you're caries free. In my own mouth, I found a, uh, my dentist found a lesion under an old amalgam restoration um, in, in a third molar on number 32. Uh, they opted to recommend extraction of that third molar um, and I had three third molars extracted at that point in time. Right? But I clearly still had caries in my mouth. When I went back for my next recare appointment six months later, my hygienist said, well, you don't really need to have a fluoride varnish. And we discussed the science. We discussed the literature on this. And, and she still had the belief that we were taking money from the patient. Instead of viewing the, the application of a varnish as a way of me being healthier. And, and if they had explained it to me that way, then whatever fee they were gonna charge would have been something I would easily accept. If they just say, we're gonna apply this and it's gonna cost you uh, some amount mo uh, more of money, then I wouldn't understand why. But if they can explain it, then I'm willing to accept that treatment. And we find that everywhere. If the dentist, the hygienist, or the assistant have that conversation of why it's important, then patients uh, are willing to accept it. Certainly, in my case, on my next uh, recare appointment, they they found a proximal lesion on number 17. Again, it's a lesion I did not need to have, but it was brought on because they weren't regularly applying fluoride varnish. And and I'm a patient who's more educated than most and want this this uh, to be applied. So the prevention to me is is an area that. Is, is, is a must application for all dentists, all countries, worldwide, if we want to improve overall systemic health. I fully understand the, the concern if I'm not being reimbursed for that treatment. But what does it cost? In, in, for a single dose of fluoride varnish in Romania, what is that uh, price to the dentist today? It's, right. it's quite low, it's a uh, 3.5 run, so basically it's uh, under $1. The, the cost for a uh, for dentist, but the benefit for, uh, for the patient is quite high. So it's, the material cost is under $1, and the time to apply it when the patient is already in your chair will be 30 is, seconds. is 30 seconds. That cost of the practice is minimal, so you know, if, if you charge 10 or 20 lei, you would still be able to recover all of that cost, plus a small profit, plus deliver greater health for your, your patient. And they can leave understanding the extra work that you did to, to take care of that patient. This is the kind of message we're, we're trying to drive uh, through our marketing. So in our marketing now, we, we have uh, adopted a program we call Prevention for Life. And, and Prevention for Life says that we treat the, the first time a tooth appears in, in, a, in a baby. So roughly at about age one. So from first tooth to last tooth, 
uh, we want to be able to, uh, we recommend the application of fluoride varnish whenever the, the patient is at, at medium or, or high risk, but especially at high risk. We need to address this for adults as well and not pretend that there's not a need. Today for adults, most of us are taking some kind of medication for heart disease, hypertension, um, or any, any kind of mental health issue, uh, diabetes related. All these medications uh, are, have the potential to cause xerostomia. Uh, it's been identified somewhere over 500 regularly um, consumed medications uh, cause xerostomia. As we age, we see uh, more recession. With more recession, I have ex exposure of cementum and possibly dentin as well. Ideal uh, sites for bacteria to, to reside and then cause dis destruction, destruction. So now the destruction I have is root caries, not occlusal caries. Occlusal caries being easier to treat than, than advanced true. root caries. Yeah. So the application of fluoride varnish becomes more critical to prevent uh, long-term needs of, of, of uh, restorative care for the, the patient. As your patient gets older, and then they, they, they reduce the amount of visits that they have to the dental office, the, 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 the restorative requirements go up because the oral health treatment goes down even further. We find patients that, that go to nursing homes or long-term care facilities, stop having good uh, personal oral hygiene, they soon develop um, uh, root caries. They soon uh, find uh, um, exfoliation or loss of a tooth. And frankly, death is, is not that far afterwards. It's not a ca caused by the individual loss of a tooth or the, the individual development of caries, but of uh, part of the impact of that whole process that has changed as, as we are aging. So if I sound like I'm a little bit passionate in this area, absolutely. Um, will we ever rid the world of caries completely? No, but we can rid, rid ourselves of unnecessary caries and unnecessary treatment. I know years ago in the United States, dentists were concerned that we won't have any need to do more dentistry because yeah, there will be that, reduced caries. That's a big argument, and I uh, heard that a lot in Romania and other countries also. Mm, not officially recognized by the dentists, but uh, they will, some of them will say, if I will start to make a lot of prevention, I will apply a lot of fluoride, uh, who's going to make cavities? Mm -hmm. From uh, making a... Um, uh, applying a uh, fluoride varnish, I don't know, I will make 10 US dollars. Mm -hmm. On the other uh, side, I will place a composite filling. I will get some money. That composite filling in, uh, in years will uh, deteriorate. That tooth will need a core uh, and build up. In the end, I will place a crown. I will make less money. Yeah. This is um, a, a thing, and it's an actual real thing, uh, for which uh, a lot of dentists are, maybe are not applying uh, mm -hmm. varnish. And also it's um, quite a huge campaign, um, just like anti-vaxxers that uh, are saying that fluoride is causing a lot of, a lot of issues. Mm -hmm. uh, we are having tons of studies that are not. There is no uh, a scientific study that said uh, uh, fluoride varnish will cause some um, general issues. Mm -hmm. So you, you're absolutely right, and what we, we see these kinds of campaigns exist around the world. I just came from Australia last month, and and there there's a there's a campaign uh, uh, for anti fluoride, and and they want to reduce the, even the amount of fluoride that's placed into water. Who's leading that campaign? It's a chef. He has a TV show. And for whatever reason, he's decided, with no science behind him, that fluoride must not be good. Perhaps they saw that if I consume too much of it, it's, it's toxic. That's true of so many things. Frank, frankly, you can consume too much water, and yeah, it's unhealthy you for you. You can die from. So we have this um, non-scientifically treated uh, or based uh, approach that we on the science side, especially dentists who are scientists, who need to, to lead this, this fight will we'll show that the prevention and the use of fluoride varnish is a healthy thing for patients. Now, the question of will it mean I won't have any work to do? On the contrary, it was absolutely the same concern in, in the United States. And what we saw is that patients, now when their mouth got healthier, 
then they wanted their mouth to look more beautiful. Yeah, that's true. And as I wanted to look more beautiful, I, I did more orthodontics or more Invisalign style treatments. Um, I wanted to have the colors of my teeth brightened and not, not stained as, as they were. I wanted to have the shape of my teeth look more natural, look, uh, look like others who I think look beautiful. I wanted my smile to look beautiful like that. So we found in, instead in the US that the, the, the demand for uh, dental care increased, but it increased in the areas of the higher end procedures, more direct composites, more and more indirect restorative work. Things were actually more expensive for, for the patient, but they valued them more because they were healthier. They didn't only view dentistry as something that when I was in pain. Now dentistry makes me look good and feel good, and I feel good about myself. So the idea that, that if I do more prevention, it's going to reduce my work, that's, that's the same kind of, of unscientific belief that the idea that fluoride's not good for patients. Um, it's none of the science, none of the data supports that at all, anywhere in the world that I've been. Yeah, what I want dentists to understand is um, if they will do prevention, uh, this will not mean that they will lose patients. For, uh, for example, uh, right now an average dentist will have, I will just give you an example in Romania, they will have something like 10, 20 patients a day. Mm -hmm. Maybe in the US they will have three, five patients a day. But when you are taking the, the money, at, because we are, we are talking uh, about money, when you are taking the, the profit that you are making, maybe in the US after three patients, you'll make more money than you uh, have in, after 20 here in Romania. Mm -hmm. Why? Because a patient in the US maybe will go to the dentist and need actual work like a composite filling mm -hmm. once every five years. Mm -hmm. uh, s uh, here, maybe a patient, you, you will see it every month because they will have multiple problems mm -hmm. because uh, there is almost zero prevention, uh, prevention uh, done. And, uh, for the patient, the cost in, in the end will be much, much higher. Mm -hmm. uh, the dentist also will not be that happy because uh, it's much nicer to have only three patients a day mm -hmm. than compared to 20. Uh, you can uh, have more attention for every one of them. You can have more free time for mm -hmm. you and go to um, congresses, go to uh, wherever you like maybe use that time for yourself or just uh, um, make more education mm -hmm. for, uh, for you and uh, the rest uh, of the world? Well, yes, but I went to my dentist on the way to the airport for, for this trip uh, for, for a hygiene appointment. I go every four months now because I have caries in my mouth and I, I need to have that um, hygiene appointment and, and now they've identified me as more caries prone. But I'm interested, I want to go, not just because I'm, I, I, I work in the, in the field of dentistry, but because they've shown me how my health is better as a result of, of care. My dentist has a, has a fairly successful practice. There's two dentists and there's four hygienists in that, three hygienists in that practice. My dentist sees um, 10 patients a day and he practices five days a week. Uh, his partner sees uh, 10 to 12 patients a day and he practices um, five days a week, but they, one of the, his partner usually works on the Saturday as well. So, so it's actually the rare dentist who's seen just three patients a day, and especially three to five, only once in a while. They, they still find they need to see patients to earn enough money to, to live okay. and, and pay for their education. Because in the United States now today, the average dental student graduates with just under three hundred thousand yeah, dollars of student insane. debt, yeah. whereas in, here in Romania, I think that the, it's, it, it's all it's all for free, yeah. and, and you don't have that debt burden, which is a fantastic choice, or a fantastic opportunity. But the idea that if, if I do preventive work, it's going to limit w what's going to be done in the future is is absolutely false. It's a it's a concern I understand, but it's a concern not um, supported by data. The data says that won't happen. Um, so I go regularly. I have good uh, dental care. I still have abfractions in, in my teeth, so I need some restorative work on, on, the, on the facial surfaces. Um, I have uh, old amalgams that, that uh, are beginning to fail. They've been in place for a long time, but they're beginning to fail. So I have additional restorative work on a regular basis. I believe that, that um, at least every other year, I'm having some restorative work being done. In fact, earlier this year, I had uh, my second crown. I have 
no root canals in my mouth. I have but two, two uh, crowns now, and I have um, uh, a, a series of, I still have old amalgams, and I have a series of, of uh, composite treatments as well. So I am having regular care, despite having, uh, having regular restorative work done in my mouth, despite having really good uh, dental care, um, and, but I, I don't lose teeth as a result unless they were extracted um, intentionally. I lived in England for a number of years, and my wife is English. Uh, back as recently as, as uh, the middle 1970s, it was still common to receive um, in the industrial north of England, it was still common to receive as a dowry present full dentures. Because extract all your teeth when you're yeah. in your early 20s and you'll never have dental problems. And we now know you only increase the, the amount of oral health problems that you have. Uh, you, you may also not have a systemic tooth. one because you'll have you all, know, all digestive. All kinds, uh, all directly related to each other. So my, my passion about preventive dentistry is that it's a way to increase systemic health. It is not a way to reduce dentistry. More dentistry will be performed because patients know that they're receiving great care. They are, are having less caries, but they want their, their smiles to look more beautiful. And, and people are spending the money to have that optional treatment done on them so they look more beautiful. That's sort of the, the benefit of a, of a developing economy and a developing society, is that I, I reach a certain uh, level of my health, and now I want it to look better and feel better, and now I can afford to do more of that. So I think Romania has that same level of development from 20 years ago to today. It's a significantly more de developed economy and, and higher expectations from the consumer's point of what they want across all phases of their life, including their health and their oral health. So I, I, I would have to argue strongly against the idea that doing prevention is going to reduce the, the need for, for dental care in the future. I think it'll only increase the amount of care that any one dentist provides. So prevention will not reduce the number of the patient for, uh, for the dentist. As a, as a matter of fact, everyone knows on, uh, on this world that uh, the well-known Hollywood smile, basically mm -hmm. uh, teeth really nice, mm -hmm. really white. Um, US, it's a leader right now on mm -hmm. uh, prevention, but also it's a saying in US that if you are really, really rich, you are either a lawyer or a dentist. Yeah. So, even uh, if the dentists are uh, in U.S., it's a lot of prevention. The dentists are still making uh, a lot of money. They still have a lot of uh, patients. Yeah. Where should we, we start here in Romania with prevention? Should we start with the patient? Should we start them, uh, teach them in, uh, in schools? How important is the, the prevention? Should we teach more the dentists? So whilst it should happen at all levels, I believe it happens in the dental office first. If the dental team doesn't appreciate the, the role of prevention in increasing health and also increasing the amount of dentistry that will be done over the lifetime of the patient, then they will not talk about prevention. And when the patient brings it up, they won't answer it in an enthusiastic way. And they'll answer it in a manner that the patient says, maybe I don't need to do that. And we don't usually choose to go to the, the dentist and say, ah, do whatever you want. Yeah. I, I go there because I believe it's important to come on a regular basis or because I have a problem. If I have a problem, it's a time to get the patient moving in, in the right direction in oral health care. If I go there on a regular basis, I'm going to keep on going even though I, I need additional restorative care because I value the health of my mouth. I value the appearance of my mouth. And the, the people who help me understand that is my dentist. So I, I believe you start with the dental team. Certainly at the dental schools or in the hygiene schools, it's important as well. And even though we, we tend to view this as, as the, if, if an office has a hygienist, it's the hygienist's responsibility. It's only, they only take it as their responsibility if the dentist first says, yes, this is important, and we will do great preventive care as part of our delivery of great oral health care to our patients. And then the hygienists will feel free uh, because it's, it's, it's uh, an improved style of this practice. And then I, uh, they, they recognize they are working in a progressive practice where patient health comes before other considerations. And healthy patients generate more revenue for the, for the dental office. Uh, we spoke about education. Um, 
dentists and uh, patients alike. Mm -hmm. uh, I know Centrix is involved in uh, education programs. Uh, I know it's really, really active. For example, uh, it was in uh, Roots in Berlin. It will mm -hmm. be uh, now on um, end of days uh, in Romania. Uh, Dr. Daniel Cerny from uh, Czech Republic mm -hmm. will, uh, will be here. And it has a great, great presentation about mm -hmm. uh, post-endodontic uh, treatment. Mm -hmm. um, how is Centrix? Uh, so active in this uh, in this area and what you are uh, doing right now with the webinars with the lounge channelers because mm -hmm. the, the, it, it's an important area uh, there are so many different products available to a dentist to use um, how do they understand the differences in products if, if education is not not provided I can certainly provide education that is that is basically marketing um, and and it tells you great things about my product whether it's fact-based or not my preference is that we provide continued education credits with it, uh, which means the material has to be reviewed uh, and, and that, it's, that it's, it's scientifically based um, and that it's supported by data, as opposed to just m marketing or sales information. So we have been building a series of in-office education programs that, at least in the United States, um, will provide continued education credits. So that's an important area. Another important area is to be able to do all this online or digitally. In the United States, um, digital education is starting to overwhelm uh, live education. It just makes better use of the dentist's time. One of the, the reasons I, I wanted to come here was, was Dentstore has this fantastic educational studio and has the ability to, to um, share this information from manufacturers, from, from scientists, from dental schools, to their customers. And their belief is that an educated customer not only does better dentistry, but recognizes the value that, that a distributor like Dentstore is in, in helping them grow and become a more profitable dental practice. This is a fantastic facility. Uh, I have to admit there are few dental distributors and even few manufacturers around the world who uh, have both the sophistication of facilities and have the understanding of the need for these facilities as I've seen here at, at Dentstore. So this, this is a, a fantastic facility and it, this company is only to be congratulated for that. But we too are, are, are making use of facilities like these. I, I know you do a lot of education from, from this facility and we want to be able to, to share what we have or also work together um, with uh, uh, companies like Dentstore so that we can provide more education uh, to the dentist. So that whether it's 10 o'clock at night uh, or, or um, when I'm home having a cup of coffee or it's 10 o'clock in the morning I have a patient in the chair, if I don't understand something or I want more information about it, I can go online and quickly gather the information I need to have so that I, I again, am delivering the best possible care. In, in the old days, this was not possible. I'd have to wait until the next exhibition or the next Congress took yeah. place and I can go and, 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 and fill in some knowledge. Uh, and maybe buy a, a book and uh, search the, uh, the yes. answer in one uh, one thousand. read a book. <laughs> yeah, 1,000 pages. Yeah. Right now, you, you just go uh, on the internet, make a search. You can see a video, for example, if you, it's your first time when you are using a, mm -hmm. a glass fiber post, how you mm -hmm. uh, supposed to do it, you just see a video, you see step by steps, and this way you're, you're guaranteed. Again, I, I use the word guarantee. At least you, you know that you are doing the, the right steps. Yeah. So education uh, is definitely the, the it, future. It, it, it is, and I would only say um, use the same caution in education as you do in, in choosing materials. We manufacturers, I, I would say almost all manufacturers, strive to provide great information. But there's no doubt that some of our information has a bias because there are our products. Yeah. And so we understand that. I think um, you understand that as well. That's okay as long as when the dentist views this material, they keep that in mind. Um, when you have clinicians like Dr. Uh, Cherney, he's a fantastic clinician. And so he's able to come to endo days from the Czech Republic but I can use that same material in the United States. And we like to work with, with um, uh, clinicians like Dr. Cherney, like say Dr. Zace in the United States, um, and any number of other clinicians who are more expert than we could ever be to learn from them 
and modify our products ap appropriately, and then to share back their information on how to do whatever the topic is more correctly. And where our products fit, fantastic. Um, where they don't fit, fantastic as well, because there are plenty of choices for, for the dentist. It's understanding what one wants to do and why, and then being able to do that is, is very important. Uh, you, you'll, you'll find the right products. There are lots of alternatives. Yes, of course, I think that Centrix offers uh, an array of very good products, and, and we work very hard to make sure they meet both Dr. Dragon's uh, requirements of us, of, of providing outstanding products that make dentistry easier. Because if we do that, then you'll want to try another Centrix product. But we, we do this from an education-based approach, a science-based approach, rather than I can make some things and, and sell them and I hope you'll buy them, whether or not they're good. No, we focus on, does the, does the science say we ought to go in this area? Does the data show that our product works effectively? And that do we deliver it in a manner that is usable in the practice? Uh, we started our, our interview, our discussion today uh, by saying that you work uh, at Coltin and you, uh, you're uh, responsible of merging between uh, Coltin and Weldent. And um, you said you, you had a, a funny story about uh, that period. Can, can you share it with, uh, with us? <laughs> So I, I'm American and I can't help that. When, we, when Coltine purchased Weldent, Weldent was the, the market leader in, in uh, uh, endodontic posts, retention pins, and, and many other uh, um, uh, metallic devices. And, and they paired well with many of Coltine's um, uh, chemistry-related products. And the initial company was going to then be called Weldent Coltine. Fantastic. We, our, our art department worked on the, uh, the images for the company, the logos and how they should look. And, he, and so we had Weldon Coltine, it looked beautiful. Um, we said, yeah, we'll probably short that, shorten that name and, 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 and we should have an alternative. And then we presented the shortened alternative, which was WC, <laughs> to our, our Swiss uh, partners. And they said, no, you can't see that. Because in America, we don't use the phrase WC for a toilet. No? <laughs> and, and, and in Switzerland and here, you do. Yeah, we do. <laughs> yeah, and we didn't want to have the wrong impression. So on that same day, we saw that, and we just said, nope, this is wrong, and we became Coltine Weldent. And it was Coltine Weldent for 20-some for years, and, and only recently, in the last three years or so, uh, the, the name Weldent was, was dropped, and it's just Coltine. Coltine right it's, now. it's shorter, it's easier to remember, so a good move on the, on the company's part for, for doing that. But we didn't want to have a company that was perceived as a WC. <laughs> yeah, that, that's true, no one. Yeah, uh, uh, I think we'll, we'll want that. Uh, thank you a lot for being uh, here today uh, with us. Thank you for uh, sharing for, uh, from your experience. Um, thank you for showing us where is Romania is as a dental market, um, comparing with, uh, with the rest of the world, with the US and the, the rest of, the, of the Europe. Yeah. Once again, it, it's, it's my pleasure, and it's, it's it's always a pleasure to be here in Romania. I know if I had a, a dental problem today, I could go get myself treated here uh, as well as I could do that in in New York. Th that's not a concern of mine. Uh, the concern is only on an ongoing basis: what is the the dentist able to do and make enough profit to to live properly to pay their staff and take care of the team, so that it's it's a um, financially viable opportunity. I think dentistry is, is a great profession. I still encourage my son to go to dental school, and I hope that he'll, he'll take me up on that, but that's for the future. We, we are waiting here for you with a big uh, next innovation that uh, you, you'll have, uh, I hope, uh, really soon. Once again, thank you a lot for being uh, with us uh, today. It was a thank pleasure. You. Thank my you. My pleasure. Thank you. Bye.